Today on Bearish TV, lighting is both the most commonly misinstalled component on the reef tank, but also paradoxically the easiest thing to get right the first time. If you want to see how a PAR meter can realize that dream of getting it right and knowing it, that's coming up. Hey, this is Ryan with Beers TV's five minute guide mini series on LED lighting and reef tanks. Our goal is a few minute path to solving those lighting challenges forever. I'll just start by saying you're not alone if you struggled with lighting or actually just find yourself wondering if you've done it right. This is something almost all of us have experienced at some point. I'm just gonna say it like it is. Most of the discussion about reef lighting is a million miles from clear. Very little is universally agreed upon and what little there is, is simply not transferable from one tank to the next. Today, we're gonna to get past all of that, show you a way that will produce reproducible, legit results for anyone who chooses it, all based on tens of thousands of PAR measurements, our own results, and the numbers the pros use to achieve their success. The approach is based on using a PAR meter as a tool to measure light output and make informed decisions that lead to reproducible results. Most of the corals in our tanks have fairly well agreed upon PAR ranges that they thrive in, so let's use them. That said, there are two approaches I'll share today, the easy way most reefers use, and then the advanced approach. Both will get you where you need to go, but there's some pretty serious advantages to putting just a little bit more thought into it with the advanced approach, which will become clear in just a moment. The easy route is this. If you haven't already, mount the lights the way the manufacturer suggests, and then adjust the intensity sliders or knobs to your best guess for the corals that you want to maintain. It should be pretty obvious that the guest path will only work the experienced or lucky. For everyone else, rather than just lose corals, we can use a PAR meter to measure how successful that approach was and then tweak the settings so it's just right. You can buy a meter if you want, but unless you have a slew of tanks planned or advanced uses like testing frags for color and growth and different intensities or have friends to loan it to, it's just a lot cheaper to rent one. We have them for 70 bucks for a week with a free return label. To do that, I suggest taking a picture of the tank, then assemble the probe rod, hit the power button, and start writing down some PAR numbers at various locations in the tank. The goal is simple. If you have LPS corals like polyps, softies, micros, acans, zoanthids, xenia, torches, hammers, frog spawn, toadstool, sinularia, GSP, or any of these, they just do best with a BRS recommended PAR range of 75 to 150 PAR in as much of the tank as possible. If you have SPS corals like Acros, the BRS recommended PAR range is 200 to 350 PAR in as much of the tank as possible. It's just the goal. It's simple as that. If you want a mixed tank, well, not surprisingly, you're going to have to create some zones of 250 to 350 PAR in areas and other zones in the lower 75 to 150. However, for most people, it's less about creating that area and more about just using the meter to optimize the dominant goal like SPS up top and then using the meter to locate lower PAR areas for your LPS. So that's where this stops for most reefers and I'm pretty certain you can already see why this method has higher success rates than the slide and pray approach. This is where the advanced approach comes in. Most LPS tank owners will not need to take the step, but many mixed tank or SPS reefers will benefit from a more advanced approach, a blanket of even light. It's just more beneficial with these types of corals. Some are you gonna find that no matter how you move the sliders around, there's always a giant hot spot in the center of 600 to 800 par, but six inches to the right, it's just 100 to 200, and the sides of the tanks are like 25 par. Finding this is actually great news because you just found what I would call a fatal installation flaw that you'd likely never find without a PAR meter and no amount of sliding will fix. This is related to the fact that the manufacturer's suggested mounting and spacing suggestions can range from accurate to widely inaccurate, or at least in your case, not producing the desired results. Most notably, just because it comes with legs does not in any way mean that the legs are the ideal mounting height. In fact, we find it's far from that in most cases. So the solution, the otherwise unsolvable hotspot is simple. Raise the light up and redistribute the light more evenly. For those of you who want to take this advanced approach, this is what we do here at BRS. First, if Randy's done a recent investigates on your light, go look it up because it probably already has all the work done for you and has a data back recommended mounting height. But without that, I'd start by using the manufacturer's suggestion as a starting point and then measure the top of your tank, I mean the top of the aquascape and where the top layer of corals are gonna be. Ideally, looking for most of the measurements in your desired coverage area to be within about 100 points or so of each other. If that's the case, move on. The mounting height is good. However, if you're getting readings of 800 to 1,000 par and 100 to 200 par, six inches to the right or left, it's time to start raising up the light. The easiest way to quickly assess a decent mounting height above your tank is just by raising the light above the tank until you see significant signs of light spill outside the edges of the tank. 
something you can often see on your hand pretty easy, will likely be between 8 inches and 24 inches off the water. Where you fall in the 8 to 24 inch range is somewhat about the area you're covering. Smaller areas can have the light closer to the tank. Larger cover areas benefit from raising the lights up to achieve a wider spread. But this is actually equally about the type of light used, blending the spectrum from dozens of tiny LED diodes and redistributing that light evenly, ideally in a blanket of light in the tank, is a significant engineering challenge. The closer you get to water, the harder it is to do well, and related to that, the more costly LED fixtures often provide the best performance in this area and can be mounted close to that 8 inch range and still provide that even blanket of light. That said, you can often get similar performance from the intermediate to lower cost LED options just by raising the light up higher. In the end, it's all the numbers, so I just check with the PAR meter and confirm that it produced the desired even spread. It might take a few height measurements to get right, but with a PAR meter you can confirm it and you should be able to find that optimal height within a matter of minutes. There are often some efficiency losses from the highest mounting heights and viewed from a sitting position it might be somewhat blinding, but when you do find the right mounting height for your specific light, you'll likely find watt for watt the PAR output and distribution between many different light brands are in the same neighborhood. That's the goal of finding the right mounting height, not just the right tool for the right job, but also installing the tool to achieve its optimal performance. Next up is using the PAR meter as a tool to identify ideal proper spacing of multiple modules. At first glance it would seem like spacing the lights evenly over the tank would produce even distribution. However, the reality is the light sources intersect in the middle producing a hot spot which is often 50% higher than the sides of the tank. You can solve this by moving the lighting out an inch or two towards the sides and then measuring again. Proper spacing does seem to be much more important when you use a couple of really high powered lights to cover a larger area like two and 120 gallon tank, but matters less when you use say four lights with half the overall wattage to cover the same area. In either case, play with the spacing a bit, confirm with the meter, and you can hone in on some ideal parameters for your tanks in a matter of minutes. Once you've found that ideal height and spacing, we just go back to the easy path, take that photo of the tank, and write down the PAR numbers and adjust up or down until you get that ideal coverage for your desires. Again, the BRS recommended range for SPS being 200 to 350 in as much of the tank as possible. If you have LPS, 75 to 150 PAR in as much of the tank as possible. One of the things we're doing to make this easier is Randy's doing most of the legwork for you with BRS recommended mounting height, spacing, and settings for a ton of different lighting options with a new one each week. So I check out this playlist right here. There's also a hot link to the PAR meter rental right there. They're often on sale, so I'd check it out.